Yes, it's an Aria and it's in for its six months inspection because it belongs to a professional entertainer and it's always best to get it done if you're using it extensively uh, to get it checked out, get it tidied up every six months. If you're not using it extensively, I mean it sits in, there in your lounge and you pick it up once a year, then sell it to somebody who will play it. <laughs> Guitars have hearts too, you know. They shouldn't be sitting there bored to tears, waiting for someone to love them. Like my Gretsch, which never gets played. <laughs> anyway, yes, every year you do something like this, and if you, but if you are not, uh, if you don't play it that often, you might get away with it once a year. But generally it's exactly the same as what you always do. This guitar, because it's well played, needs the strings changed. But we're going to take the strings off first, gently. <laughs> oh, sorry, Georgie girl. What happened there? Did, you, did it scare you? The strings, she usually comes running for the strings. But it scared her. Did it scare you, the noise of the strings? This chappy likes, doesn't like thin strings. He likes the 11s at least. And he might even go up to 13s if he, uh, depending on the guitar he's getting in tune. He has a, not a bass guitar, what do you call it? No, I can't remember the name, but the guitar that plays very thick strings. Not a bass guitar, but it's a bass tune guitar sort of thing, but it's not a bass guitar. Your soprano guitar. Well, I don't know. I can't remember. My brain's not working. Don't ask me to think. I'm only a luthier. We just do a certain thing and then fall over if we get asked too many technical questions. Who put these strings on like this? Hey, who put them on? Me. Me. Unless Chris broke one during the year. My mate, Nessie, broke one during the year and replace it himself. That's the excuse for that string being badly wound. <laughs> so we must do that. Georgie girl, you didn't come to play with the strings. Did one of them hit you in the nose or something? No? Right, okay. Well, it must have done, but she's not, she's not playing the game. Before I put new strings on, I'm going to check the fretboard, check the neck, which is what you should always do with your guitar. If you're into guitars, you should be able to fix your truss rod because it's not the end of the world as long as you use the right Allen key. Don't go for one that's too small. And it's not the end of the world as if you use the right Allen key and also you don't swing on it too much like you're going to fix the uh, Titanic propeller or something like that there. He needs this because he doesn't like feedback from his amplifier because this is amplified. And just check to see there's no broken struts or anything, and there's not. I check the straightness of the neck. You can use a ruler if you wish. I have that perfectly fine. Straight, but with a slight bow. Slight underbow. Why? Why? I don't know why. I just like it. I think it gives a bit more flexibility. That's a very dirty neck. So it's going to get a wee clean, my love. It's going to get a wee clean. And uh, the frets aren't bad. He, rhythm guitar, not not uh, not late guitar. And there's no real action on this. You know, there's no real string bending or anything like that. There, it's uh, popular music and country music and stuff like that is played. But let's just see. That's pretty dirty. People will tell you don't use wipes on your guitar because they've got chemicals. Well, I tell them don't let your guitar get dirty. This this one here is kills 99.9% .9 of bacteria. So if I wipe these twice 
we're, we're killing 500% of bacteria and so they owe me some so I'll stay healthier. Am I right? You kill 99 twice that brings it up to 500%. It's pretty dirty. I think I'm going to give the head a wipe too. And then I'll. Because I think the head may be a lac laminate, I'm going to dry that off quickly. I don't want any damage to the laminate. It may not be a laminate, it might be a solid, but it doesn't look shiny. And then it doesn't. Anyway, that's that right off. Now, give it a going over again. It's going to need another clean because I'm going to sand it down now with a very fine sandpaper. 3,000, 3,000. It barely takes anything off because it's so fine. It really just polishes. Mm, that's pretty good. I'm not going crazy. This is just a sort of a six month service. shouldn't take you more than half an hour unless you find a problem with it. The black that you see there is probably the, the dirt off the frets and I'll show you the cloth afterwards. You two stop fighting. They are arguing over the, who gets the most famous, the most popular cat shelf. That's just the, 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 the dirt off the frets maybe a little bit of metal coming off them as well because the sandpaper will take a little bit off them. If you use sandpaper every six months on your guitar just like I did there in the year 4556 you probably would have to refret. There are people will tell you not to use kitchen towel on your on your guitar either because they will leave little scores. Fine. You do this day in and day out and day in and day out and you won't have much kitchen towel left or you won't have much fine cloth left. Now if I was a luthier that was charging money I would probably be able to afford to buy the fine cloth, non lint free, shiny, highly polished cloth. But I am not a, a luthier that charges money so I don't get that luxury. That's pretty good. And oil the neck. Don't over oil your neck. Once a year for over for your necks. Don't need to do it that often. Once a year if you're if this this guitar is in the cold and out of the cold and in the cold and in the heat and in the cold and in the heat. So it's getting a little bit of guitar oil on it but not a lot because you can see I'm virtually taking it off right away. But that just stops the neck from, stops the fretboard from cracking and gives it a little bit of a protection too. It also makes it smell lovely because it's lemon oil. Yum, 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 yum. Still takes off a little bit of dirt there. As you can see, there's still some dirt to come off. Right, okay, I'm not going to go crazy on it as I said. Let me just do underneath so not in there. Right. Now, just quickly look at the head. Just check that the tuners are all feeling okay. That one's a bit loose. Just a touch loose. And maybe that one. Oh, what's happening here? What's happening here? Well, that's better. Right, okay. 
So as you see, it doesn't take much to to just keep your guitar sort of running. Just check that the tension's on that. Did you notice I'm not using the tool for it? Because I don't want to swing on it. If they're loose, I'll notice with my hands and then I'll go over and get the tool. But that was really just to check to see that they hadn't loosened. Right, okay. Now, let's... That's okay, let's get the strings on. I've checked the neck, everything, yeah, I'm going to get the strings on now. Mustn't forget that because it's almost impossible to play it through an amplifier on stage and you get so much feedback. Let me just make sure my hands are... I'll speed this up. Too many wines so not I like lots more wines on the E B string, but there were just a bit too many on that. But it's done now. Only reason I say it's too many because I had to use that too much and that just put more wear and tear on that. But I like quite a few on the E and B string, but maybe not as many as that, so I just pulled it out too far when I was tuning it. And as you probably saw, what I do is I put it in and I, oh, it's loose, right, okay. And then I put it through the hole. If I can get it through the hole, right. And then I pulled a certain amount. Sorry, I did it that way. I pulled a certain amount out like that there. And it should have been that amount, but instead I pulled it out too far. I use less and less as I go along. My mate swears by elixirs. He swears by elixirs. He says he uses all sorts of strings, but the elixirs are the ones that last the longest and give the nicest sound. Now, if Mr. Elixir is watching, I'll gladly accept a donation of a big roll of string. You know the way they can, you can buy those strings in big, big rolls? I could never afford it. I think there's something like three or four hundred pounds for a big roll of strings and one string. You see some luthiers going over to the shelf and pulling down the roll from the very nice. But, uh, no, nope, not for me. I can't afford it.
case you're wondering, I press down on the string to keep it right at the bottom and let it work its way self up. Just the way I do it, whether it's right or wrong, I don't know. There's no mystic or magic about guitars. There's no tips and tricks that'll say this will make you be a better guitar player. They'll show you them all on YouTube. But the way to become a better guitar player is to practice and practice and practice. And maybe those guys will show you guitar tips that'll help you to practice, but it won't make you a guitar player unless you do the practice. Okay, pause. Right, the last thing to do is get it in tune.
I'm going to charge you, go. There you go. Oh, oh, something's just gone out of tune. Hold on. All right. Now, normally on this kind of thing, I'd check the battery, but I know the chap uses a, re a, re a rechargeable battery and he charges it all the time, so I don't have to do that. Not going to play any tunes on it because it's just a setup. Okay, and that'll need to be tuned again before he plays it, but that's it. Servicing a guitar. <laughs>